Well, we got like 19, so install PF Sense. We want Norwegian key map. Um, Norwegian. Continue okay. with Norwegian key map. Uh, guided setup for using UEFI boot method. Uh, root on CFS, manual disk setup. Uh, guided disk partition setup using UEFI boot mode. Well, I guess we could just use UEFI because we're not really doing any ZFS stuff. Which means UEFI mode on that one. Uh, entire disk, yes. A GUID partition table. And blah, 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 blah. Swap, blah, 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 blah. How much swap do we have? Four gigs to swap. Seems fine. Commit. So basically, we need two things here. We need the cable that's going to be doing the shonk, and we need the cable that's going to be doing the other side. Now, I don't know if this thing is just going to magically work with this, right? So, uh, this is kind of like a um, go big or go home, but I'm going to let it get done with like the installment shit so I can unplug this thing. Um, Hey. Come on, you PF send shonk and all well, this thing is 30% done optimizing the image file in the Vim file pretty much. Now I'm not creating an ISO out from this because we added in the file directly. It's now finished. Before we exit, would you like to open a shell in the system and do any manual configurations? No. No. Complete. Would you like to reboot now? I would like to reboot. Which means I should be able to unplug this one and it should be able to boot from the disk. Which means I should be able to plug you into there. Yep, detached, detached, blah blah blah. Makes sense. There we go, reboot. Should boot right into PF Sense. Although it's still got the default boot sound. Although it's gonna use a hot time to like detect that it's supposed to go on to that shape because obviously stuff. Because the system is expecting something else, while what it's getting is well, something else. Huh. There we go, PF Sense. And it's just gonna automatically boot. It's gonna correct the resolution. And boot it into PF Sense. Now, here's the thing. I gotta check if that one works. If it does work, however, well, that blue cable is getting moved over here, and this other cable is gonna be our, uh, per se, uh, so basically, this one is gonna end up being basically the router feed. Uh, So first of all now, let's double check if this one is communicating at all. Yes, okay, so it works. Should VLANs be set up now? Well, there we have you. Then we need to, well, pretty much pause that. Now that should continue even though it doesn't have internet. Connect you, disconnect you from the router, and while pull her out, and while plug her into 
the so called temporarily new router because uh, we <laughs> unplug you in should VLANs be set up now? yes VLAN capable enter the parent interface name for new VLAN configuration VLAN capable interfaces and nothing is finished. Enter van interface name. So van interface is uh, PGE zero. LAN interface UE zero. Yes. Which means this one needs to be disconnected. Well, would you look at that? It seems like uh, we're working. So now I just have to do uh, per se get the web configurator so I can access it via the. Uh, well, there's my LAN IP, which means I should be able to access it from here. And basically, well, my web configurator stuff. So. Yes, so we got um, my, well that is currently my van interface and then this thing is my non-van interface. Now technically speaking I haven't set up shit, but in ground and reason if everything works as it hopefully does, I should be able to just do this, go um, just search G on Google I guess. Well, so I can't be... Well, let's try to go get my keyboard. So, 192.168.1.1 should lead me to the PFSEN stuff, technically speaking. Unless I need to reset the web configurator stuff. As I might have to. Give me a half minute and I'll try to fix this chunk. Well, let's try to go get my keyboard. So, 192.168.1.1 should lead me to the BFM stop, technically speaking. Unless I need to reset the web configurator stuff. I don't might have to. Give me a half minute and I'll try to fix this shock. Well, let's try to go get my keyboard. So, 192.168.1.1. Well, it's supposed to work, but it ain't working, so that's kind of... Okay, we're back, and uh, I just got back from having a fucking... Um, basically a firewall lockout from my PFSN GUI because... I managed to type in my 
because I thought I had reset the password because it kept complaining that it was not the correct password for some reason, which didn't make sense. But I had just told it to do it and just pressed enter and didn't press yes, so I was still entering the wrong password when I thought I had reset it, which means I basically three failed attempts, basically Fireball locked myself out of the system, so I had to clear it. Uh, with um, the, the, um, the actual command, now everything works. Now, now, now comes the fun part of um, re-adding all of these again. Now, this is gonna be fun, cause um, um. Interfaces, gateway, interfaces, NTP. That? No, that's, that's just my port forward, which is what we are going to work on. Eventually, but... Assignment, no. Um, system. Yeah. Routing. Packet manager. Then they're all set up. In status DHCP. Leases, I guess. There, that was what I was looking for, you donk. Actions, add static mapping. Add wall mapping. Aha, uh -huh. so we got, well, my tab, we got the MC machine. And the wall mapping. Uh-huh. So that's the server machine, which has always been 199. Nikola Wing 666 is washer. Uh -huh. So it seems like the address for that one is still the same, which means as far as... Um, so as far as port forwards go, we can do at this family protocol TCP. So basically, um, 